The story you are about to hear is fiction, science fiction, today. However, we offer no guarantee whatever how long it will remain fiction. Exploring tomorrow. Now, here is your guide to these adventures of the mind, John Campbell, Jr. We do like to have new things, don't we? And we do have some new things under the sun. There are several satellites up there now that weren't circling under the sun a few years ago. And there will be other things new under the sun. One of them is this subject, psionics. We've mentioned it before on the program here. It's a curious sort of thing. It isn't science. It's outside of science. But science isn't everything. There are many things that lie outside of the furthest reaches of what we know as science today. McDougall was a prospector, a sourdough. But he was a 20th century kind of sourdough, out roaming the short pine hills of South Dakota with a Geiger counter slung over his shoulder. He was looking for uranium. And so far, he'd been out in the barren flatlands over a week without hearing the welcome barrage of counterclicks that would tell him he'd struck uranium. Another wasted day. I ought to be using a gamma detector instead of a Geiger. Who could afford one of them? Well, one more mile, I call it a day. What? What's that up there? A house way out here? Who'd want to live out here? <laughs> Maybe I could promote a cup of coffee before I turn back. Hey, anyone home? I'm a prospector wandering through the vicinity. Mind if I step in for a while? Come on in, stranger. You're the first company I've had in two months. Thanks. I'm pretty beat. Well, here, friend, have my best armchair. Only an upside-down orange crate, but it makes do. Yeah, it looks swell to me right now. Oh, it's been a rough day. Rough week, as a matter of fact. Lean pickings around here. Hunting for uranium? Yeah. Oh, I thought so. There's always a couple every summer. Yeah. Ever since word got around that there's uranium in these dar hills, there's always been some fellow willing to tramp around here looking for it. Where's your Jeep? No, I haven't got a Jeep. Just an old jalopy, and it's not worth much for this kind of country. I left it back north and made it down here on foot. That's the whole trouble. If I could strike some uranium out here, I could buy a Jeep so I could set out to look for uranium the right way. It's a circle. And the only way out is to strike it rich. I know the feeling. Frustrating, isn't it? Well, you wait here. I'll put some coffee on. Fine. My name's Colville. Yours? Uh, McDougal. Say, uh, I hope I'm not prying too much, oh, but I was... I know, I know. You want to ask me what in blazes I'm doing out here alone right. on the edge of nowhere. Well, I, I don't mind telling you. I'm working on a project. And the only way I can carry it out is to come away out here where nobody can bother me. I uh, come out every summer. Teach the rest of the time. Texas Tech. Oh, you're doing research, huh? Mm-hmm. Psionics research. <laughs> I'm a sort of a... Professional crackpot. Oh, and that explains all the uh, weird gadgets around here, I guess, and all the electronics gear. Psionics, you say? You mean uh, telepathy and levitation and stuff? You sound skeptical. Not at all. I, I oh, just... Don't apologize. It's a normal reaction. That's why I come out here, where none of my faculty colleagues can get wind of what I'm doing. It's simpler to work that way for now. Besides, I'm also an amateur geologist. This is interesting country for a geologist to poke around in. Well, say, uh, I don't mean to run your work into the ground, of course, but, uh, well, psionics has always seemed like fairy tale stuff to me. Yeah, so it is. Fairy tales, exactly. Like flying carpets and magic mirrors that let the magician see things far away. We call them airplanes and television. If I told you what some of these gadgets here can do, sometimes, yeah, you'd laugh at me. Worse than that, you might try to lock me up, so I won't tell you. Okay with me. I'm too beat to start discussing psionics with anybody just now. You got troubles, huh? You bet. What kind of troubles? Yeah, what else? Money. I sank all I had into this prospecting trip. 
It's flopping miserably. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. You know, I think I could build you a psionic thing of me that, that might help you. Oh, thanks. No, I wouldn't want to waste your time. Oh, but I wouldn't me, be wasting I... time. It would be a valuable experiment. Well, for you, me. you don't seem to catch on. Uh, psionic's a lot of fun to jabber about over a cup of coffee, but as for taking it serious. Have you ever you... seen a psionic machine in action? I haven't. But look, uh, machines just don't work that way. What way? Well, without rules, without sense. Uh, look here. Here's my Geiger counter. It's a machine. A regular kind of machine. When it's near the right kind of radiating particles, it does a lot of ticking. When it's not, it hardly ticks at all. It works that way 100% of the time. Now, you can rely on it. It makes sense. It hasn't been doing you much good lately, has it? That's not the counter's fault. I just haven't been in the right places. Oh. Well, suppose... Just suppose I could build you a machine that would take you to the right places. In other words, that would find uranium for you. Do you think you'd be interested? Well, I... Well, first of all, there definitely is some uranium out here. Somewhere. Others have made finds near here. The stuff's pretty diffuse, but it can be found. Okay. Give me a couple of days to build you a psionic doodad, and then we'll turn it loose out here and see what happens. Well, I... Well, you... what can you lose? Come on, maybe I can help you out. Call it a test. If I've got something, you'll be striking it rich. If I don't... Well, at least you'll know you gave me a fair try. Uh, okay. You build me your thingamajig and I'll try it. Meanwhile, I'm sticking to my Geiger. Exploring Tomorrow continues in just a moment. Let's take a moment to think of the world we live in, of just how small it really is. For example... A modern commercial transport flying from San Francisco would reach Honolulu in a matter of hours. So let's say that you're going to the Hawaiian Islands for the first time. Although there are many reefs and shoals included in the Hawaiian chain, which make it the longest group of islands in the world, you'll probably find that Hawaii is the largest island of all. Probably the most well-known of the group, however, is Oahu, because it's the most highly developed. 70% of the territory's population live on this bit of land, 40 miles long by 26 miles wide. And it's here that famous Honolulu combines old Polynesian traditions with big city conveniences and facilities. Being in a territory of the United States naturally accounts for the Hawaiians following the American democratic way of life. However, they do have laws and quaint customs that are still their very own. Respect them, and you in turn will be respected as a fellow American citizen. Hawaiians are a hospitable people who want to be friends. But remember, the only way to have a friend is to be one. McDougall said he was sticking with his Geiger counter. I think it's a matter of debate whether he was sticking with it or stuck with it. After all, if you've been using a method for a couple of weeks and getting no results at all... Are you sticking with it or stuck with it? Anyway, he spent two more days ranging the area and drew a complete blank. He hadn't found anything worth digging for. Things looked pretty bleak when, on the third day, he made his way back to Colville's lopsided shack. The place smelled of soldering flux and looked even messier than before. Gadgets and spare parts strewn all over the workbenches. And Colville was holding something. A long, thin rod with some sort of wiring on its underside. Here you are. One genuine, unguaranteed, homemade psionic dowsing rod, specially adapted for uranium hunters. You did whip something up. Let's have a look. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's a nice job of wiring. Thanks. And it finds uranium? I like to think it will. <laughs> Come off of it, Colville. You don't expect me to fall for this. Of course not. It isn't a matter of faith. Why don't you try it out and see if it works? D do you seriously think that you. You mean. Ah, I give up. You. You build it. Least I can do is try it. Uh, well, how does the thing work, assuming that it does work? Well, what's the theory? There's uranium down there scattered in that lignite bed. You might say it's radiating the fact of its presence. But your mind's not selective enough to pick up the signal. The noise level's too high. Well, that's where this rod comes in. Call it a transformer. It steps down the noise and boosts the signal so that you can pick it up. You know, you sound dead serious about this stuff. I am. I just don't know. Uh, you, you look sane enough. Well, suppose we try it out. Let's go see if the 
uranium wants to be found. One nice thing about living out here, you don't have to bother locking your doors when you go out. Yeah, I guess not. You never have snoopy neighbors or any other kind of neighbors either. Oh, I get some prospectors now and then. You're the first who stayed longer than for one cup of coffee. The others all thought I was a mad scientist. They beat it as soon as they could. Mm-hmm. I think you're a mad scientist too. I know. But I hope to change your mind. You're flexible. The others weren't. They were sure I was crazy. If that rod works for you, you won't think so. I'm not so sure of that. Maybe you'll just think I'm crazy, too. Maybe. Well, here we are. You ready? What do I do? I take the rod by the handle, like, like so. Mm-hmm. Now, now, grab it like you would a tennis racket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there. You feel comfortable with it? Not very. The rod seems top-heavy. It doesn't sit right in my hand. Your handle's too big for my grip or something. Are you sure? Try shifting the rod around a little. Mm-hmm. It still doesn't feel right. Okay. We're ready to begin in that case. Hmm? You heard me. Try pointing the rod in different directions now and concentrate hard on uranium. Maybe you, when you've got it in one certain direction, you'll discover the rod suddenly feels right. This is the craziest... Hey, it, it feels all right now. Uh, it didn't believe me, huh? I was just waving it around. All of a sudden, it uh, felt comfortable in my hand. It... Seem to fit there. Go ahead. Follow your nose now. Straight ahead. We've gone a hundred yards. Uh, when do I stop? You stop when the rod tells you to stop. But how? Okay, you're the boss. Oh, Lord, it's hot out here. Hey. The rod's dipping it, twisting downward. It's dipping, all right. A- and listen to that Geiger counter. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. That counter's going crazy. Carlville, this contraption of yours has struck uranium. McDougal was a busy man in the next six weeks. He staked out his claim, filed his papers, brought in assayers, and sold his claim for a good chunk of cash when it was definitely proven to be uranium rich. Then he paid another visit to the wobbly shack out in the flatlands. You there, Carville? Come on in. Oh, you packing up? All right, summer's over. Time to go back home. And you're taking all your uh, gimmicks with you? Sure, I've done all I can do out here. Now I go back to civilization and polish up my researches. How'd the negotiations with the mining company go? Well, that's what I came back to see you about. I, I want to ask you some questions. Fire one ready. Well, uh, now look here. I made quite a pile of money out of that load you found for me, you know. Enough cash to get out from under my debts and then some. I'm glad to hear it. Okay. I made a lot of money because you let me use your machine. Now, but there's some catch in all this, and I want to know what it is. Catch? Yeah, catch. Listen, you're not a rich man. You probably draw a lousy salary at your college, and all this equipment of yours costs dough. More dough than you got, right? Maybe. Okay, then. You got a machine that can make money for you. It can find uranium. And today, that's real money. So what do you do? You put all that money in my pocket instead of grabbing it yourself. Now, I don't get it, Colville. How come you can afford to be altruistic? when you're obviously hard up for cash. Altruistic? Mm Mm-hmm. What do you mean? Look, my friend, do you know how that rod works? You explain, but I can't say it makes much sense. Well, then, listen. It's a three-phase setup. In order to find uranium with a rod, three factors have to be present. Any idea what they are? Well, for one thing, you've got to have a uranium deposit somewhere nearby. Right. Factor number one. The effective range of the rod is about ten miles around. The second factor you need, of course, is the rod itself. And the third... The third factor is that you've got to have a genuine, deep-down desire to find what you're looking for. Finding uranium has to be the burning goal of your existence. That's the thing that makes this rod work. Without it, it's just a bunch of circuits. What are you driving at? The rod won't work for me. The third factor is not there. Hmm? But you you want uranium just as bad as... Oh, no, not so. You want uranium. 
I wouldn't mind finding some, but that's not the same thing. My main interest is my machine. I want it to work. I concentrate hard on making it work, and of course it, it doesn't work. Oh, because you end up concentrating on the machine instead of the uranium. That's it? Mm hmm. Well, couldn't you try to concentrate on the rod then? <laughs> Suppose I order you not to think of a hippopotamus. I, I get what you mean. So your machine just won't work for you simply because you want it to work so darn bad, uh, and you can't fool the machine. I can't fake a belief I don't have. But I can get around the machine by adding a fourth factor. You. Me? Mm hmm I can't make the rod work, but if I could make you make it work, that would be almost as good, no? So when you wandered in here, I put you in a position where you give it a try, and you did. And got rich. That's still altruism, isn't it? Not at all. I was using you for my own ends. I proved that the rod would really find uranium, which was something I didn't know definitely as long as I couldn't test it myself. But uh, I'm glad you came back. That proves you're the kind of man I'm looking for. For what? What would you say to a scheme like this? I'll supply bigger and better mineral-finding devices for you to use, and you'll use them. We'll split the profits 50-50. Sort of uh, pool our assets for mutual benefits, well, huh? That's the idea. You'll have the use of this darn near infallible locating device, and I'll not only have a source of cash to carry on further research, but I'll be able to test my equipment on a willing experimenter. What do you say? Your biggest dream in life is to have one of your own machines work for you, isn't it? You might say that. And it can't ever happen. Your machines can only function for other people. You're sort of like a blind man painting pictures he'll never see. I told you I don't mind, but you, you haven't answered me. How about my proposition? You make the gadgets, I use them. Mm -hmm. We split 50-50. We'll get filthy rich. We'll be able to pave the bad lands with platinum. You like the idea? Why not? We'll make lots of sweet money together. <laughs> What's the gag? Uh, nothing, really. I was just thinking about all this cyanics business. I always thought of myself as a pretty hard-headed businessman. Feet on the ground and all that. Here I am, going into partnership with a mad scientist. <laughs> Psionics. Well, what do you know? Shake, partner. Do you know the difference between crackpots and geniuses? The geniuses make money. Then I guess we're geniuses. <laughs> That is our fiction. What I want to tell you now is not fiction. It's fact. And I think it's quite relevant to this story, also of exploring tomorrow. In Flint, Michigan, the home of automobiles and solid engineering work, the city engineering department has been doing some very interesting dowsing. The problem of a city engineering department includes the problem of finding water mains and sewer mains and electric power cables and the like that are buried under the city streets. Maps are supposed to show where they are, but somehow the maps get misfiled or a correction doesn't catch up with the work that was done. And every now and then somebody has to go looking for a buried cable, water main or the like. Out in Flint, Michigan, the city engineering department, I understand, has found that the most efficient way of finding it is with dowsing rods. That's standard procedure out there now, I understand. Join us for a fascinating adventure in Exploring Tomorrow. Okay. Heard in our cast tonight, Maurice Tarplin and Bradford Hoyt. Script by Bob Silverberg, produced by Sanford Marshall, Bill Maher speaking... <laughs> We pause now for station identification.